Here we go. What's up, Jet Team? Welcome to the channel. Ryan here. If you haven't been here before, I'm a former F-15E combat fighter pilot, F-16 Thunderbird pilot, and current commercial pilot. And I use that experience to break down epic aviation videos and stories that you can send to me on Instagram. And today I'm going to be breaking down the DCS F-16 Viper launch. I'm going to tell you what I'm seeing, whether I think it's realistic or not. I'll stop and break down some little things throughout the Viper cockpit and throughout it firing its weapons. It's going to be a pretty fun video, if I don't say so myself. But before we get going, if you would, just... Dominate that like button for me, maybe even subscribe. Every time you like and subscribe, a pilot somewhere gets their wings. <laughs> With that said, let's dive in. So right at the very beginning, the HOTAS, the hands-on throttle and stick, it's got a great mode with your thumb there and you can kind of see it, barely it says dogfight, and it's a dogfight mode. And essentially if you slam that thing all the way back, it puts the Viper into a mode where it clears out a lot of things around your HUD, your heads up display, that might be distracting to you that you don't need when you're in a knife fight in a phone booth, which is what one would call a dogfight. I also like the positioning of the radio switch. You're gonna just use your pointer finger there to pull that thing up, and it's got a lot of different options. So you can have one radio for your up position, another one for the down, and a few for like the out. When you're working with multiple frequencies, when you're talking to joint terminal air controllers and things like that, just a really usable hands-on throttle and stick, and just a really nice setup, nice ergonomic design, I would say, as far as like the side stick and the throttle. So there's a lot of switches down there on the side on that front left control panel, but a lot of those switches you don't touch a lot in flight. Those are kind of things that you would set and then they would just kind of operate as you were flying. So not a lot of things that you're gonna be able to do as you're moving super fast, dog fighting, dropping weapons, as far as looking down at all those different switches. So a lot of those type of switches, you get them set before takeoff. All right, and then I wanna highlight here this upfront control, the UFC here. It's got that kind of toggle switch that says RTN and SEQ on either side. That was actually super usable. I was a little bit intimidated by it at first because I'm like, you know, what is this? But if you think about it kind of like a mouse on a computer, you can use it to step through different pages and different lines on different pages. And it goes to a return side to the left when you wanna just kind of go back to start where you're like, uh, okay, I just wanna start over. You just go return, which is nice, and then step it over to the right side of that, you've got drift cutout, that drift C slash O. What you would do there is you would put that to the up position if you were in high crosswinds and you wanted to see your flight path vector, the little thing in your HUD that tells you where you're flying. If you're in high crosswinds, the HUD's not big enough to show that when it's off to the side. So drift cutout puts it right in the middle and doesn't account for that crosswind crabbing type maneuver. Nice feature to have if you're operating the Viper in high crosswind scenarios. And then if you look up at the top, now these are pretty nice because you can customize the different settings on which mode the jet is in. So you can put it in an air to air mode, that A-A, -A. you can put it in an A-G in air to ground mode, and it just kind of helps you so you're not setting up individual things when you're transitioning from an air to air environment like fighting your way in and then dropping a weapon and then fighting your way out. That's called air interdiction. And so the Viper has pretty good capability when it comes to that. I would say to me, it's definitely more of a dog fighting type machine, but obviously it could be the jack of all trades as well. Anybody else want a Viper of their own? Just keep it in the garage, take it out, fly it around. Here's the keys, have it back by noon. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Ooh, I like that. Okay, so that's firing the AGM-65, which is a Maverick. It is an air to ground weapon, and it's a precision guided weapon that's used to kill tanks and things like that. Really nice weapon. It's got a range of about 20 kilometers, I would say, at the max end of it. It's expensive though. Believe it or not, these things can cost around $50,000 a piece. So um, use sparingly.
All right, looks to me like that's a heater just by the shape of the fins on the back there. So that's like an AIM-9. The Viper has also been fitted to shoot the AIM-9X, which is a helmet mounted queuing system firing weapon. So you can look with your helmet, you can lock onto things that aren't directly in front of you like you need to do with the older AIM-9. So the AIM-9X, super capable. I used it in the F-15E. Just really awesome to dogfight with the AIM-9X. All right, so there are some 500 pound bombs falling off of the F-16. And if you look at the bottom of that F-16, like that thing is loaded down. So I was always very impressed for the small package that the F-16 is, how much ordnance it can carry. I mean, the thing is a workhorse and you can see that by looking at the bottom of that beast. And then just the front on look of the Viper, just a great looking aircraft. I flew the Block 52 mainly, and it had a wider intake than this. So this to me looks like a smaller intake, maybe an older version of the F-16, but on the Block 52s, they put what's called the wide mouth intake on that thing. And it was just designed to suck in as much air as possible and give you crazy amounts of thrust. So being able to fly that on the Thunderbirds was huge, but if you just look at this thing, it's essentially a rocket ship. It's an engine that they happen to throw a cockpit and a little radar on. I mean, just having that much thrust and that much maneuverability, just it was amazing to feel like you could get out of a lot of bad situations with having that much thrust. But then when you go and fly another plane that doesn't quite have that much thrust and just ability to be ripped around like a sports car, you notice it and you miss it. You miss the Viper. Viper, I want you back. <laughs> So if you look now on the right side of the Viper, you can see what's called a lightning pod. It's kind of that darker gray pod. That's just a camera, it's a big camera. And it's decent, but the lightning pods, you had to be pretty close to see anything on the ground. Nowadays, they have what's called a sniper pod. And that's what I used towards the end of my time in the F-15E. And that thing was just super usable. I mean, the way that you could zoom in with that thing and see things on the ground was incredible. With a pod like this, it's gonna be a little more challenging. You have to be closer, which which means it might put you closer to threats and things like that. So awesome that we have an update. All right, there's the F-16 HUD. So as you can see, just very usable down the bottom left, 35659. That's your distance to your bullseye or whatever other pre-selected point you have. You've got your radar altimeter there, obviously showing zero, and then your calibrated airspeed on the left and your altitude on the right. Just very usable. Not a lot of things that you don't need in the F-16 HUD, which I appreciated. I always loved how the gear comes up and spins to the side to go into it. Just like something that's sort of simple as far as the other systems on the Viper, but just solid engineering. So you could see some of the flight controls moving around on the Viper. Like the way that those things operated is why the Viper is called the electric jet because everything, it's almost a miracle, I think, for all the flight control systems to work together. And it's fly by wire, which everything is electric. There's no like pneumatic type devices or hydraulics or like lines or cables or anything like that inside the Viper flight control system. It's all operated by the computer. And it's kind of like you ask it what you want with the stick. You're like, hey, I want to do this. I'm putting this much pressure back or I'm turning this fast to the left. And the system, the computer, instantaneously is like, uh, I can give you this. And then it gives you what it can give you. Kind of the same thing with the engine. There are certain things you could do with the engine that would essentially wreck an engine because if you go from idle to max afterburner, idle to max afterburner a whole bunch of times in a row, it could flame out a normal engine. But what the engine has is a computer built on so that it tells you like, uh, 
okay, you're ripping the throttle to idle. Well, I can give you idle in like one and a half seconds, not in zero seconds, bro. Or you're going to max AB from idle. It's like, well, okay, I can give you that in three seconds because I'm not gonna flame out the engine to just give you what you want. So it's definitely a smart jet. And that's actually something I appreciated about it because you could focus on looking outside, running your different weapon systems. You weren't worried about like, well, I can't move the throttle this way or that way, or I can't yank the jet this way or that way within reason, but I like the automation of the F-16. And the fact that you can throw an AMRAM on the end and have two AMRAMs, you know, one on each side of the wing, just amazing, love that. So something there though that I'll call them out on is like the tanks are blowing up and there's still bullets coming in and hitting them. Now ideally what you want to do is you're going to shoot the gun from up here and then you're going to do what's called a safe escape maneuver and you're going to get away from the ground so there won't be bullets coming in still you know, while they're blowing up. Ideally the bullets are coming in, you're doing your safe escape, tanks blow up, no more bullets are coming in because you don't want to get hit by those secondary explosions. If you're blowing up tanks or you're blowing up, let's say like a weapons cache or whatever, you don't want to get hit with those secondary explosions. So that was a little bit unrealistic, but overall, this, this looks pretty incredible. Okay, so those high drag bombs, those bombs that have the parachutes on the back, that's so you can come in extremely low and be flying level, release a bomb at like you're super low. Let's just say, for example, 500 feet. If you did that without that chute on it, it's gonna hit so fast that it could explode and hit your jet. That's how fast it would hit and blow up. So those parachutes, basically slow it down so you can get out of there and do a safe escape either straight through going really fast or a turn to the side to get out of there while those blow up. So very versatile weapon. So there's an aileron roll over the ridge. I think that's funny because you typically would never see that. It's against some training rules so we would never train to it. Now in combat, all bets are off, but not a move that you would typically do just because uh, could get spatially disoriented, you're right next to that ridge, things like that. But I love they put it in here, it's fun. I wanna try it now. <laughs> All right, super awesome video. I'll just say, I love that they're showing off the maneuverability of the F-16. Now, if I was fighting off any SAMs or in a dogfight with any jet, I'd wanna be in an F-16. I mean, maybe an F-22 as well, but let's just say fourth generation. I'd wanna be inside this F-16 because it's so maneuverable and it's able to get away from some threats extremely easily. Here soon, I'm gonna release a video that shows an F-16 dodging six SAMs, essentially with maneuverability alone. It's gonna be an epic video that'll be coming out soon, but it's things like that that I think they're highlighting really well by showing off the maneuverability of the Viper. So as far as how they did with this trailer, I'm gonna give them an A because at the end of the day, they showed off a lot of realistic things of the Viper, and I think they're doing a great job with kind of bringing you into the experience of flying it. If you would like to fly it with me or you'd like to fly against me, let me know in the comments below because here one of these days soon, I'm gonna be jumping on DCS, would love to fly with you. At the end of the day though, so glad you guys are here. Please go ahead, dominate that like button and subscribe. We'll see you on the next video. Have a great day.